Hello and welcome to another NGen Math 7 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we're going to be doing Unit 5, Lesson 1 on the properties of real numbers. So for the next few units in Math 7, we're going to really be diving into some algebra. All right, I love algebra. Um, and in order to understand algebra, which is the manipulation of variables and the solving of equations and all sorts of things like that, we really have to understand the properties of real numbers. Now you might be like, well, what's a real number? Essentially any number you've ever learned about, whether or not it's a whole number or a negative number or a fraction or a decimal, all of those things are what we consider real numbers. Believe it or not, if you take math all the way through Algebra 2 in the high school level, you'll learn about what are known as imaginary and complex numbers. And those numbers then won't be real numbers. But everything you've learned about so far are real numbers, and those numbers play by certain rules, especially when they start to play together using operations like addition, multiplication, subtraction, and division. So today what we're going to do is we're going to be looking at some of those properties, we're going to be looking at which of the operations have the properties and which of the operations don't have the properties. All right, And we're going to try to also kind of learn the names of some of the properties so that we can have them as part of our, our vocabulary, our shared mathematical vocabulary. Anyhow, let's get right into it in the first exercise. So the first exercise, we're going to understand the associative property of addition. Now, you should kind of have heard of the term associate. Well, I, I don't associate with those kind of people, or I do associate with those kind of people. You know, associate means to, to kind of hang out with folks, all right? So kind of keep that in mind as we talk about the associative property of addition. Let's take a look at exercise one. Consider the addition problem 5 plus 8 plus 2. Evaluate the sum in two different ways. Show the steps along the way. So in other words, right, I'm adding three numbers together. The question is, will it make a difference if I add the first two, then add the third one, or if I add the second and the third, and then I add the first one? Well, I know you can add single digit numbers without a calculator and without my help, so pause the video now and do both of these problems. Both of them should take two steps to show the, the final answer, so go ahead and work through them and see what you get. All right, well, simple enough. Letter A, right? In letter A, our order of operations says we must do 5 plus 8 first. That's going to be 13. Then we'll add 2, or apparently 5. Um, then we'll add 2. All right, then we'll do 13 plus 2, and we'll get 15. All right, so when we add the first two numbers first, we get 15. On the other hand, in letter B, this way says I've got to add these two numbers first, which would be 10. And then I need to do 5 plus 10. And when I add those together, I get 15. Now, this is what's called the associative property, right? Or you can say that addition is associative, which basically means when I'm adding three numbers together, I can choose the two numbers that I add together first and then add the third one once I get that sum. And that, that probably makes all the sense in the world, right? If I take $5, and $8 and $2 and I put them together, which is what addition is, then I have $15. And it doesn't matter whether I put the five and the $8 together first, giving me 13, and then I lump the two in, or whether I add the eight and the two together first, giving me $10, and then I add the five in. I've got $15. That's what I've got. So addition is associative. What we'd like to do is see what's true about the other three operations, namely multiplication, subtraction, and division. So let's take a look at that next. Here we go, exercise number two. Now consider the product of three numbers, specifically five times three times two. Evaluate it in two ways. Show your calculations along the way. Well, I claim that it is obvious that addition is associative. Again, think about dollars or cookies or anything you might throw together and add. But multiplication? Let's see. So again, what I'd like you to do is pause the video now, evaluate this product, and evaluate this product. Again, it'll take you two steps because you've got to do this one, get an answer, and then multiply by this and get an answer. Here, multiply these two, get an answer, then multiply this one by the result and get an answer. Pause the video now and see what you get. All right, 
here we go, right? So I've got five times three, which we know is 15, right? And then times two, and then 15 times two, hopefully we're comfortable, and that's 30. On the other hand, over here, we're doing the three times two first, which is six, and then we have five times six, and five times six is 30. So is the multiplication of numbers also associative? And the answer is yes. All right, associative property just means when I have an operation and three or more numbers, right? The question is, can I group any two of them together I want, do the operation, get a result, then do the operation again and get a result and it won't make a difference. In the case of addition and in the case of multiplication, the answers are yes. So now let's investigate both subtraction and division. Are they associative? The associative property gives us fantastic license to take kind of a calculation and sort of do it in whatever order we want. But let's see if that's true with division and subtraction. Exercise number three. Evaluate the quotients and differences in A and B two ways and state whether the division and subtraction are associative. So right, I mean, this is really no, these two problems are no different than the last two that we had. You know, the difference is here I've got 24 divided by four divided by two, and here I have 17 minus five minus two. The question is, can I group any two numbers together I want to, you know, to do the division and then get an answer and keep going. So just like before, I'd like you to do, right, calculations in both cases, and then figure out whether or not the operations of division and subtraction are associative. Take a few minutes to do this. All right, well here we go. 24 divided by 4 divided by 2. Let's say that we group the 24 divided by 4 first, right? 24 divided by 4, as we know, is 6, right? So then divided by 2, 6 divided by 2 is 3, all right? But let's say we first did the 4 divided by 2. That would be equal to 2. And then if we do 24 divided by 2, that will give me 12. Oh, so is division associative? A big fat no, including some red, right? And more red. Doesn't matter how much I do. Ah, there we go. All right, division is not associative. So in fact, if we were given this calculation with no parentheses involved whatsoever, we'd have to just follow an order of operations which would insist that we would work it from left to right. So we would do 24 divided by four, we would get six, six divided by two, and we'd get three. This would be the correct interpretation of it because division is not associative, right? You gotta work it from left to right. You can't just pick whichever two numbers you wanna divide first. But maybe subtraction is associative, right? Let's see what you found over here. So 17 minus five minus two, if I first do the 17 minus five, that will give me 12, right? Then if I subtract two, that will give me 10. On the other hand, if I decide to do five minus two first, that will give me three. And then if I do 17 minus three, that will give me 14. Ooh, so subtraction associative? No, definitely not. And again, this can be very tricky for students, all right? When we get into algebra and some of these numbers are replaced by variables, it's very tempting to look at a calculation like this and go, ah, you know what, I'm gonna do five minus two and get three, and then I'll do 17 minus three and get 14. But that actually would be the incorrect way of interpreting this because again, order of operations would say, you gotta start here and move this way, so I'd have to really do 17 minus five, get 12, minus two, and get 10, all right? So both subtraction and division are non-associative. You cannot just pick the two numbers that you wanna divide or subtract first. You've gotta move without parentheses from left to right. Let's keep going and look at another extremely important property. Now we've seen this property before. Recall that addition and multiplication are also what are called commutative. Now, the commutative property only deals with two numbers and the operation. And basically what a commutative property says is it doesn't matter which number comes first. In other words, five plus three is eight, three plus five is eight. It doesn't matter. If I have $5 and $3, I have $8. It doesn't matter which one came first. 
Likewise, right, but not as obvious, is that multiplication is always also commutative. 5 times 3 is 15, and 3 times 5 is 15. All right. And again, whereas I think that this is very obvious, I'm not so sure this one is, but you've been dealing with it for such a long time that you just kind of, you just come to accept it, right? Oh yes, 5 times 3, 3 times 5. This is actually a really important property to keep in mind with, with uh, multiplication because, you know, you might have no issue with the fact that 1 half times 10 is equal to 5, right? Or, you know, wh wh whatever that mystery number is that I can't seem to, to actually write there. Um, and that's an interesting looking 5. So you might have no issue with this statement. On the other hand, the fact that 10 times 1 half is equal to 5 that might be a little bit trickier for you to think about. And yet, multiplication is commutative. So the two numbers that multiply together, it really doesn't matter which order they're sitting there in. But we should ask the same question about subtraction and division. Are they also commutative? So let's take a look at that in exercise number four. Are subtraction and division commutative? Evaluate each of the following. All right, here we go. So let's take a look at subtraction and division, right? These are four problems that you should have no issue with, all right? So I'd like you to evaluate 10 minus 3 and 3 minus 10. Now here, remember, almost all the time we're going to be seeing division now in terms of fractions. So 24 divided by 4 and 4 divided by 24. I'd like you to evaluate each one of those and then make a call whether or not subtraction is commutative and whether division is commutative. Pause your video and take a little bit of time now. Well, as we learned earlier this year, right, well, <laughs> sorry, as we learned in first grade, 10 minus 3 is equal to 7. But as we learned earlier this year, 3 minus 10 will be the opposite of that. It will be negative 7. So is subtraction commutative? Absolutely not. No. Right? And again, that makes sense. If, you know, if, if I had 10 cookies and I subtracted 3 cookies, I'd have 7 cookies. Right? On the other hand, if I was at 3 degrees Fahrenheit and I subtracted 10 degrees from that, I would now be at negative 7 degrees Fahrenheit. Right? If I went 10 degrees down from 3, I'd be at negative 7. All right? So subtraction, most definitely not commutative. Now this can really trip people up. Right? Division. 24 divided by 4, that's easy. Right? That's 6. And it makes all the sense in the world. Right? If I've got, let's stay with cookies, if I've got 24 cookies, two dozen cookies, 24, I've got four friends, each one of them is going to get six cookies. This one is much harder to think about. This is like if I had four cookies and 24 friends, how much would each person get? Well, hopefully you're comfortable that 4 24ths reduces down to the fraction 1 6th. And although they may share some similarity in the way they look, just like these two do, 6 and 1 6 are simply not the same number. So division is also not commutative. All right, and that is really, really important because again, as we move forward in algebra, we're going to be wanting to use the associative and the commutative properties to be able to rearrange algebraic expressions. But we have to keep in mind that multiplication and addition are associative and commutative, subtraction and division are not. All right, so let's kind of keep going, right? Our final property that we're going to be talking about today, right, is maybe the granddaddy of them all, the distributive property. And the distributive property just says that if I have a sum that I'm multiplying by some number, then I can multiply each part of that sum by that number and then add the results. The same is true for subtraction. If I'm multiplying a difference by some number, then I can multiply each part of the difference by that number and then do the subtraction. And this is actually kind of cool. Um, I also think it bears some, you know, some verification. So actually, let's kind of go through this together, right? The associative property says that 5 times 7 plus 2 is the same as 5 times 7 plus 5 times 2, right? A lot of times you'll see teachers kind of draw little little arrows like this. And let, let's just kind of verify this, right? You know, on this side, right, what we really have is we have 5 times 9, which would then be 
45, right? Now, if the distributive property really does work, then when I evaluate this side, I'm also going to get 45. Well, 5 times 7 is 35, and 5 times 2 is 10, and 35 plus 10 is 45. So that verifies the distributive property of multiplication over addition. That's, that's the technical name for it. Why don't you take a moment and verify that the distributive property also works when we have a mu number multiplying a difference. Take a moment to do that. Well, again, on this side, right, we've really got 10 times 6, which, as we know, is 60. All right, on this side, we have 10 times 9, which is 90, minus 10 times 3, which is 30, and 90 minus 30 is also 60. So yeah, the distributive property works there as well. All right, the distributive property is really key. We will use that in a lot of algebraic manipulation. Now, the distributive property also works with division. You don't see it happening as much, but it definitely works. In other words, if we have two numbers, like 20 plus 8, and we divide both that, or we divide that entire sum, sorry, by a number, then the distributive property says I could divide both of those numbers by that number and then add. All right, so I just want to verify that the distributive property really works for division. Let's do that together. For letter A, it says, all right, you know, evaluate this expression by first combining the numerator and then dividing. All right, so in other words, right, the straightforward way of figuring out what this is equal to is by saying, all right, well, 20 plus 8 is 28, and then 28 divided by 4 is 7. But the distributive property says, well, I can do the 20 divided by 4 plus the 8 divided by 4, and that's right here. Well, 20 divided by 4, that's easy, that's 5. 8 divided by 4, also easy, that's 2. And 5 plus 2 is 7. Therefore, or thereby, verifying the distributive property working with division. That's very important because a lot of times, you know, we work a bunch with the distributive property using multiplication. But it's more rare that we see it with division. It still works, though. So let's wrap this up, all right? We saw some major, major properties of the real numbers today, right? And specifically, the operations within the real numbers. Addition and multiplication are key here because they are both associative and commutative. And then we also saw the all-important distributive property, which we're gonna get a lot of work with in future lessons. For now, I just wanna thank you for joining me for another NGen Math 7 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems.